Hello, I'm Julia Philippi, and I am here with Hannah Diaz, and we're going to talk a little bit about what it is like to live the life of a midwife. Um, so, um, Dr. Diaz, do you want to tell us your um, backdrop and background as a midwife? Sure. Hi, I'm Hannah Diaz. Um, I am one of the full-time Vanderbilt um, School of Nursing faculty um, at the practice and also teach part-time um, with the mid midwifery program. Um, thanks for, for listening to me today and thanks Julia for facilitating this. Um, I actually completed the program at Vanderbilt myself in 2009. Um, while I was in school, I, um, I had grown up um, as an Air Force brat and um, loved the military lifestyle. And while in grad school, I actually um, sought out um, joining the Air Force myself and um, was in the reserves during grad school. And then as soon as I graduated, I became active duty. And my first um, a little less than eight years of my midwifery practice, I was an active duty Air Force midwife. Um, so my first experience as a brand new midwife um, was with the Air Force. Um, it was a wonderful first first job because it, um, as if you know the military, it's a really supportive community environment. So I felt very um, lifted up and supported in that in that new role, um, and got to work with military um, members and their families um, to. Um, help them bring new life into the world and grow grow their families. Um, so I was first stationed at Eglin Air Force Base in Florida. I was there about four years, um, and it was just a wonderful experience as a first job. Like I said, just being really supported, but I got so much experience because the military also um, notoriously has lots of children. So <laughs> um, lots, lots of good baby catching. Um, and then I was next stationed in Aviano Air Base, Italy, um, which was also a really cool experience. Um, I was there about three and a half years, um, also as an active duty um, midwife and functioned with um, three OB physicians there. So it was a lot smaller of a community because it was a smaller base. Um, so a lot different experience, but also great and really supportive. Um, so my first eight years or so as a midwife were doing that. Um, and then I came and joined the practice here at Vanderbilt about four years ago, um, and have been here since. So that's kind of my, my midwife story. Tell me about your typical week as a midwife. And I say week instead of day, because I know you're in different spots day by day through the week. So what would a typical week look like for you in the military and then also at the faculty practice? Sure. Um, I'll start with the faculty practice here because that's what my current weeks look like. Um, and you're very right. A typical day is not, you can't say that because my days are very different. Um, week to week, even very different. But here, um, this practice, we do 12 hour call shifts and it's an average of 45 hours a week, but 180 hours a month. Um, and that can vary, um, vary your weeks just depending on the needs of the practice. But typically I have one to two clinic days a week where I'm seeing patients in clinic. And that would include all of um, prenatal care, well woman or well patient care, um, postpartum care, all of those clinic visits. Um, and then about two to three 12 hour call shifts a week as well. Um, and that's a combination of days and nights and weekends. Because of course, I get to see you on the weekends sometimes. It's yeah, cool. I do get to see Julia does lovely weekend calls for us. Um, so it's, it's really varied, um, in what days I'm on and what days I'm off, but I really enjoy that because it means I will get random stretches of a couple days off in the middle of the week and can get things done and spend time with family and run errands. Um, and 
you know, have a little bit of downtime. Um, and, but also, you know, be working full time. Um, and you're at the hospital, you take your call predominantly at the hospital, or do you cross cover with the birth center as well? Yeah, I um, am one of the midwives that is just at the hospital. So all of my call shifts are at the hospital. We do have some midwives in our practice that do both call and birth center. And we have some that are just at the birth center. Um, but all of us are, you know, communicate well with each other for transfers and we accept all of birth center transfers at the hospital site. Yeah. Um, I would say, so that's kind of a, a typical week in this practice. And um, when I was in the Air Force, it was a lot different um, hours wise. Um, so I would share a share call with three other individuals. There was four of us and we would do um, there always had to be two of us available, especially uh, I needed a backup physician available, of course. Um, so we would do um, first call, second call all the time. And we would do Monday and Tuesday. So 48 hour calls during those two days um, or Wednesday and Thursday, 48 hour call those two days. And then the weekend was 72 hour call. So three days on. Um, but we weren't quite as busy as the practice here at Vanderbilt. Um, so there was actually some time to sleep, even though it doesn't sound, sound like too much. Um, so with that, it was different because we would do, um, when we were on for 48, so Monday and Tuesday, I would be on call during the day on Monday, but I would also see some clinic patients within that time frame. So it was a lot of back and forth between downstairs in the clinic and upstairs to labor and delivery um, all in the same hospital, same building. Um, and I would sleep when I could in the call room. Um, I relied a lot on my nurses for management if I had been awake for a full day plus, um, just for safety reasons, I couldn't, I needed a nap um, in there sometimes. Um, and always had always had a backup second call person to help me if if need be if I'd been awake for thirty six hours and just couldn't take it. Um, but definitely a different world when it's a little bit of a smaller facility and you don't have as many providers versus being in a really large practice um, where you're busier um, and have shorter hours of call. Yeah. What's it like to take call on nights and, and weekends? Is it different than, than days, you think? I think, I don't think um, weekends during the day are all that different. Maybe even just a little bit slower because you're not also fielding calls from the clinic. Mm -hmm. And you're only hearing from patients that are having emergent issues. So maybe a little bit quieter weekend days. Um, nights are definitely different. Um, I know, Julia, I know you enjoy night call. I enjoy night call also, but it's really tough sometimes because the lack of sleep um, is, is something you might not think about. I don't think I thought about that going into midwifery was not a thought that I wouldn't sleep. Um, but there's something about, I think, taking care of people um, and just being in that moment that just gets your adrenaline up and keeps you going. Um, I, I will try when I'm on nights, I will try to sleep in a little bit later that day. I'm, I'm personally really bad at taking naps, but um, I know a lot of people will try to take a nap before their night shift. Um, I think that can be really helpful. Um, but Night call is, is very similar to day call in that you're still um, managing labors and providing labor support. It just happens to be in the middle of the night. So what's your favorite part of your life as a midwife? What's the best part of it? I think the absolute best part is just um, the relationships and connections with people. Um, it, you know, I think as as midwives, um, we get we get more time with patients. Um, 
we actually get to really, you know, focus on that person-centered care and talk to them about things that are that are important to them, maybe other things that are going on in their lives. Um, so you can really figure out how you need to be there for them um, during not just the labor process, but the pregnancy process. Um, I, I love I love making connections with people and, and being that support to people. Um, I think that's also one of the hardest things though as well, because um, most of the time outcomes are so happy and wonderful and you get to be a part of this great adventure and um, maybe one of the best days of someone's life. Um, but there's also some sad times um, if, you know, if a patient experiences a miscarriage or um, struggles with infertility or has an IUFD or stillbirth, um, being able to um, continue to be there for them and maybe separating yourself a little bit emotionally so that you can provide really good care and support. Um, you don't have to completely be unemotional. It's, it's good to show that you care and even cry with patients sometimes, but you also have to be that support and that pillar that they rely on. Um, and that can be really tough. I think it took me a little while to figure out how to separate myself and say, nope, I can be sad about this, but I'm going to be there for them first. Yeah. 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 I like to, um, I like to talk about midwifery is 90% happy. Um, but we have to be prepared for that 10% that we're helping people through a, a hard experience. It's still a, a sacred experience. It's still an honor to be with them, but it's not, um, always happy. Yeah. Right. Um, how do you work self-care? Like what things do you do so that you can continue to work nights and days and flip back and forth and be emotionally present with people? That's a great question. Um, I don't think that I did that in my early career at all. Um, I, I was so focused and so excited about being a midwife that um, I often would agree to, even when I wasn't on call, I wasn't supposed to be working. I, I just felt such a, such a love and pull to come and be with patients when they would say, oh, aren't you going to be there for my delivery? And be like, yes, I will. I would come in um, when I wasn't supposed to be working. Um, and I loved those moments because I felt special bonds with people and wanted to be there for them. Um, but I think it, it did take a little bit of a toll on me in those first few years because I would come in all the time when I wasn't supposed to be there. Um, and I, I do a better job of that now. And I will still do that kind of thing occasionally, but um, really focusing on things that help ground me. For me, that's um, spending time outside on my days off um, and doing like a daily yoga practice. Um, and just making sure when I'm coming in, if I know I'm going to have a really long call day and I have a bunch of inductions and I know I'm not going to leave the building, making sure I have lots of good water and snacks. And um, sometimes I'll even bring my yoga mat to the call room um, and do some stretching and, and things to, to ground myself in the middle of the day even. And I know you're good about taking your vacation now as well. Like you just had a delightful vacation. Oh. Um, so it seems like you're doing well about making sure you get your balance um, so that you can give to others. Um, That's really important to do that. Um, taking that time off when, when you can and when you have it. Yeah. Spend time with your family and doing things that, that bring you joy. Mm -hmm. Anything else you'd like to add for people who are thinking about coming into midwifery that's important for them um, to know? I, I would say I think it's the greatest profession in the world. I'm not biased at all, but definitely the greatest <laughs> profession in the world. I think it's, um, you know, getting, getting to um, create these connections with people and be there for people um, during such an amazing time in their lives. Um, is wonderful. I think one of the other things I want to talk about um, with being a midwife 
um, something that took, again, took me a little while to help figure out um, how to um, balance um, time management. There's so many things to think about, um, especially when you're at the hospital or at the birth center taking care of laboring patients. There's a lot of other stuff going on too. Um, you need to round on your patients or check in on your patients that have delivered the day before or the night before, help them with breastfeeding issues or ongoing pain issues, um, sending them home, making sure they have all the education they need to go home and they don't have concerns. Um, dealing with phone calls from the clinic during the day or patients during the day that are not sure if they need to be seen or not. Um, then seeing those triages when they come in, helping them decide if they need to be admitted to the hospital or admitted to the birth center. Um, and then figuring out if you have more than one patient, how are you gonna manage um, being labor support for a couple different people at the same time? How, how long should you stay in a room versus go to the other room? Um, so there's a lot to figure out there, but you will figure it out. Um, but it is, it is kind of a tough thing to, to, um, to do, to figure out yeah. that management. And you've always been in, in pretty high volume sites. Um, so that's always been the juggle that you've had. Well, it is lovely to talk with you. Great.